It's a day for Pops in the Park at Nationals Park. Nice to see our four-legged friends with us here, boy. Find a win out there somewhere, and maybe they come in twos. We shall see. Bob Carpenter, Ray Knight, FP still under the weather. Welcome to the ballpark today. And it's hard to set up today's game without thinking about some of the things Roger Bernardino did out there last night. One of the most impressive displays ever for the Nats by a leadoff hitter. No question about it. He was doing everything well, Bob, as well as we've seen any player do. He was bunting, getting on early in the first inning for a base hit. He lined the ball into the gap, uh, short hopping the wall for a double. He had another single in between there. Uh, he had ended up walking and he stole third base. But the most impressive of all this is that he went and got a ball last night that I don't know if any other center fielder in this league would have gotten. Tremendous acrobatic play, full tilt, turning his back to the hitter, catching the ball in the well of his glove, and at that point really saved the ball game. But what he's done, the job he's done for this club ha has been uh, really special. Two great stats, the 414 on base average, and then another one that's not on there. How many runs does a guy score? He has scored runs about one every other game, and that's a pretty good pace for a leadoff guy. Now, today's pitching matchup, Levon Hernandez and Anibal Sanchez. It was no match in Florida last weekend because this Sanchez kid, he's capable of a one, two, or a three hitter almost every time he takes them out. Well, he is. He has great stuff in the combination of being able to throw it where he wants it. He has been in this league now for five years, been injured three of those five years, but when he's healthy, he's as good as anyone. He throws that slider, the sinker, the split finger, and a big curve ball. Uh, one thing for sure, he's been able to solve the Nationals as he's 7-0 and against his ball club. Levon just now wrapping up his work out in the bullpen, and if the Nats need somebody later, is Drew Stewart available? Jim Riggleman wasn't really tipping his hand much this morning after Drew threw a couple of innings last night. Is any young pitcher in baseball throwing the ball better than this kid? Oh, no way. He is throwing the ball like a guy that's 28, 29 years old. Been in the closer role for basically almost a year now, and he is he looks like a man that's been out there for 10 years. A devastating slider. You call it a killer. I can't think of a better word for it. His fastball, 94-95, with tremendous location. Uh, he just has it all. Knows how to pitch. Knows how to set up hitters. Drew Storen, the slider, the fastball combination. The Nats have a budding star in their bullpen. He's from Stanford, and he's making himself quite an early living here in D.C. And brought to you by AT&T, the nation's fastest mobile broadband network. Cloudy day, dreary morning, but the rain has gone away. 
And for now, conditions are pretty good at the ballpark as the Nationals take the field for game two of the weekend series against the Marlins. Visit train.com for an independent train comfort specialist dealer near you. It's hard to stop a train. A comfortable 65 degrees, very muggy with the showers we've had in the area yesterday and today. 60% chance of rain, but for now, all is well. The Marlins lineup features one of the hottest hitters in baseball. Gabby Sanchez has 15 multi-hit games. He's hitting 340 with a 420 on base percentage, and he's in the top four in the National League in total bases. The young man out of uh, the University of Miami took several years to pay his dues. He's a bona fide major league slugger now in only his second full season. So Levon faces the fourth best run scoring offense in the National League today. And in his career against the Marlins, he's 13 and 11 in 33 starts. Nationals are climbing, climbing, climbing the National League defensive chart. They're now in the top nine in the league. They've made one error in their last 14 games. You may note the absence of Ian Desmond. He has a left quad pull. And so Alex Cora, the sure-handed veteran, gets the call at shortstop today. Nats have made a move. You probably heard about it by now. Brian Broderick has been put on waivers. And Cole Kimball, who nearly made the ball club out of spring training, is on the ball club. He's 25 years old out of Great Meadows, New Jersey, and has a great arm to go with it. So he is part of the bullpen now. The Nets defense nearly flawless in May. And Animal Sanchez struck out 11 Nationals just six days ago. I don't think there's anything else you need to know. Time for first pitch and get this thing going. We're on leave on time, by the way, whenever he starts. And right now we're two <laughs> minutes late, and it could be three by the time he makes that first pitch. Nobody's going to get in the way of his routine. First pitch right in there, 81 miles an hour. Just as the clock was moving from 107 to 108. Chris Coughlin hitting 262. He'll sky one to right. Jason Worth, easy play to start things off. 13-year veteran Doug Eddings has the plate today. Crew chief Dana DeMuth will have it tomorrow. Kerwin Danley's at second. And Paul Nart works third base. Marlins are 22 and 15. They stayed three games behind the Phillies when the Phillies won in Atlanta last night. And now because the Mets are playing well, three straight and six of their last eight, the Nationals are in a fourth place tie with New York at 18 and 20. Next up, last night's slide into home, throw your arm out, and get in safely, hero, Omar Infante. That was a heads up spectacular play by a base runner. Spin around quite a while. Throw beat him to the first base side. Ramos dives back. Almost tags him. He lifts his left arm up, extends his right arm. Pity pats for the plate for just a little bit and got in there in one of the most brilliant just heads up plays. Cora, not an easy play. Low throw. And again, Adam LaRoche saves him out at first base. That ball not hit. Sharply at all, Infante can run really well, and Alex Cora with LaRoche got him out. Well, Alex has no chance unless he takes ground up and comes and catches this ball on the short hop, which he did. When he did that, he was a little bit off balance, more on the front side of his body. You'll see him leaning forward there. Not a lot to throw with, all arm, but the ever scooping Mr. Hoover over there. <laughs> He I've is. not seen anybody better. I, I, I haven't. Now that I've seen Adam LaRoche, I heard a lot about him, but really never saw him play day in and day out. And he's one of those players you have to see every day to appreciate his talents. Absolutely agree. Hanley Ramirez suddenly has a five game hitting streak, seven for his last 21. He was batting right around the 200 mark when the Nats were in Florida last week, and he's raised that up to 224. And in his career, he's 11 for 31 against Levon with three home runs. Nats respect his power, play him deep and nearly straight away in the outfield. Breaking ball outside, two and one. 
Phillies and the Braves will be underway in just a minute or two down in Atlanta. And then the Mets play at Houston at 4.05 today. That's the picture in the east. Close to the corner. Uh, as the game goes on, Levon's going to need that call from Doug yeah. Ennings. We got, you know, you got to have this call. It, it, this is what gets him. That ball may a little off the plate, but he needs those type calls in order to be effective. And every time that he misses out there, then something not real good happens. He does not want to mess with Ramirez, but there's a really dangerous guy coming up. So a two out walk. The totally locked in Gabby Sanchez. Bob, there's no one in baseball. And we've said it several times, but just to reiterate it, that it has to have the outside part of the plate, the inside part of the plate. And I'm talking probably four inches, which is one baseball width and just a smidge. Uh, he has to have those balls call strikes. And when he's on, he throws a lot of balls in those spots. Thus, the umpire will tend to give him that pitch. And when he is, he's, he's very tough to handle. When he doesn't get that pitch and he goes from a two and one count to a three and one count, then everything swings in favor of the hitter. By the way, there's a report after that one pitch. There was a lot of barking from the right field seats. <laughs> about that, about Give me that, five. Give me five. <laughs> about that ball three call. <laughs> One ball and no strikes to Gabby, hitting 347th best in the league, sixth best on base percentage. And Levon just going away, away, away from these guys. Four straight sliders, four straight balls, all of them on the outside. Six, seven inches off the plate. I will not at all be surprised if he walks this guy and takes his chance with young Logan Morrison. Hanging up in the zone, 73 miles an hour though. Left-handed hitter, and he's swinging the bat well too. These Marlins are tough, man. He just flips a curveball, and because of the speed, 73, 10 miles an hour slower than any other pitch he has thrown. The speed just fooled Gabby there. Having not seen that pitch, I wouldn't want him to throw it again as a slider. That's seven miles an hour, or maybe five miles an hour slower at 68. And it is the same pitch. He just takes more off of it and gets a lot more rotation. That ball is one of those balls. That, I mean, he missed that 14, 15 inches. Wow. I think he missed it by two or three seconds. <laughs> that bat was long gone. They're going to jam him here. One are going. Ball three. And Ramirez is out. Tough pitch to throw on, and he nailed it. Hanley Ramirez helps take the bat out of their hottest hitter's hands. And Wilson Ramos with a very good throw to second. Field today, and Nats have their best friends in the ballpark on Pups in the Park Day. The lineup packaged by the UPS store. We love logistics. Roger Bernardino, four for his last date. 
But if you look down this lineup, he's 1 for 16 against Sanchez. Espinosa 0 for 4. Worth 2 for 22. Mix 1 for 6. LaRoche has the most hits, 6 for 24. There are a lot of lean batting averages against this pitcher. And Sanchez throws one in there. He's 33 and 30. 27 year old right hander. Not a real big guy. It's 6 foot, 205 from Venezuela. Bernardino goes up the middle. And the ball to the right of Omar Infante. He got rid of it in a hurry. Marlins are just ahead of the Nats in team defense. They are eighth in the league. Hanley Ramirez and Omar Infante, their double play combination up the middle. The change from last night is Greg Dobbs. Against a right handed pitcher, Dobbs will get the start at third base. They had Emilio Bonifacio over there last night. Dobbs had the game winning hit in the 10th inning. Pardon me, the 11th inning. How many innings are the Nats and the Marlins going to play today? Here's Espinosa. Fastball high in the zone for a strike. Probably as much as any pit pitcher we see in the league. Anibal uses all the every area of the strike zone. He shows you there with a belt high fastball up and away comes back with a slider down around the shoe tops on the inside quadrant of the plate. He moves the ball around so effectively. He gets a call on the corner. Yeah and that that makes it even wider Ray. That does. That's what Levo has to have. Espinosa swings through one and strikes out for the 37th time. Two quick outs, and it'll be up to Jason Worth to extend this first inning. Well, looking in the notes, the Nationals has never be beat Anibal, but you had a note over there, something about how many starts has he made? It's interesting. He's made 15 career starts. Nine of them have been no decisions. But has never lost in 15 starts. 6-0 and with a 2.16. That's... That's phenomenal. And that tells you that over the years, there have been times when he has faced the Nationals when Washington had a pitcher on the mound keeping the run total low and thus the no decisions. That's a good swing right there. Fastball middle in. Had the head out just, just a little bit over that baseball. In and out, in and out. Mm -hmm. But I mean, there have been times, and Worth is only two for 22 against him. The Nats have won games eight to seven, seven to six, five to four, when Sanchez was no longer in the game. So there have been a bunch of no decisions. Now that's what, that's what is called overpowering a man when you're two for 22, and 15 of those outs are by via, via way of strikeouts. Mm -hmm. 15 strikeouts and 22 at bats against one guy. Worth will reach out and tap one in the air. Buck goes back just over the screen. He ran right into that barrier. And there's nothing really other than his gear to help a catcher because there's that limestone wall is back there. There is an advertising sign, but he hit that wall and that thing's got a sharp edge to it. Good things that he had. Good thing he has those. Knee protectors on, but that certainly doesn't help your thighs or your rib cage on the edge beside the. And Worth is gone again you via just the strike. Not see him. It is a misty day here in D.C. Good day for the pitchers.
And a lot of fun in right field today. There's one of those eco-friendly totes they gave out at the ballpark. Top of the second, Gabby Sanchez was at the plate. And Wilson Ramos on an off-speed pitch gunned out Hanley Ramirez trying to steal. So Sanchez gets a fresh at bat here. Five of nine with a homer, three RBIs against Levon Hernandez. And he gets a strike on the inside half. Well, he's found a pitch he likes. He's thrown at three different speeds, 63, 73, and 78, the curveball. But he's gotten them all over for strikes. Target in again. That's okay as long as he gets it in there. And just misses right there by a ball and a half. I tell you, we've got some serious mist and a little bit of fog rolling in here. Our view of the scoreboard is obscured uh, just a bit. Kind of a fine mist coming down. There's a big slow breaking ball. 61 miles an hour. <laughs> the same as the number on Levon's jersey. Well, we have seen him throw it 59. Is the slowest I've ever seen. But it seems wow. that the slower he throws it, the bigger the break. Well, gravity has to take over at some point. <laughs> That one way in on Gabby's hands. I tell you what, if Levo could throw that thing at 88, he would wear hitters out because 84 inside, just not firm enough, even when everybody's seen nothing but slow pitches to keep a batter from getting the bat barrel on the ball. There again is that outside call. They will not give have. him that pitch. They just haven't given him that pitch his last two outings. Yeah, we noticed Sunday in Florida. We thought Levon got squeezed by Lance Barksdale and had to throw the ball over the plate and it was bombs away. He goes high heater. Pumping it up to 83. Levon Hernandez first strikeout changing the level of the hitters eyes here. Well he does after going away comes back up and in ball not even close to the strike zone. But Gabby chasing that thing all hitters will have a vulnerable spot right there. I haven't seen any pitcher go up on Gabby that I can remember uh, in the last two or three series. And maybe that's something that Levo has figured out and somebody can follow maybe with a little success. But he had no chance on that pitch. He gets a outside corner call to Logan Morrison. This kid's on an 11 game hitting streak. Ten of those games took place before he went on the DL. And he had a homer here last night. But I remember talking to our buddy Tommy Hutton. Analyst for the Marlins on TV down in Florida last week and he told me that they're, this ball club really misses Morrison. He's a good left fielder. Gives them some good pop behind Sanchez. Levon goes off speed and he's just dazzling people with. Those dangling off speed pitches so far. But this is a very important part of their team, and the guy's hitting 322. No score, top of the second. Marlins and the Nets, neither team with a hit. Because of the mist, the Capitol Dome, 1.7 miles to the north of us, is starting to disappear. I'm just hoping the weather will hold off. It's out there somewhere. Sixty percent chance today and Morrison will sky one to left cruising back for it Lance Nix that ball carries on to the track about three hundred and seventy feet. Call today to Luna seventy percent off all flooring eight seven seven two four one Luna shop smart shop Luna of active pitchers most starts second most innings he's going over three thousand today. Always looking for complete game number fifty. And win number 170. First pitch swinging. Mike Stanton. Roger Bernadina can camp under this as long as he can spot it in the mist. <laughs> and he's got it. Only Tim Wakefield has more career innings than Levon Hernandez. Two good ones today.
ball games. He's hitting 303 for the Nets. And another stellar offensive performance last night. Well, he's very aggressive. We spoke about that last night. Hit the home run there in the fourth inning. Then came back and hit a big RBI double in the eighth. Screaming that ball down the line. And very enthusiastic. A guy that we talked about how he plays so professional when he does. Hit that home run. He drops his head and just trots around the bases. Doesn't show anybody up. Batting average up to 303. Sanchez, with respect, starts him off off speed. Well, he is a dead red fastball hitter. Every once in a while, he'll look for a breaking ball, but he's up there swinging, geared for the fastball. Nix is the guy who broke up the no hitter in Florida on Sunday, leading off the seventh with a low laser to right field. That Mike Stanton tried to catch on the fly. The ball deflected off his glove. And as he should have, the official scorer called it a base hit. Nick's one for six career against Sanchez. So that was his only career base hit. Has a little modest five-game hitting streak. But two of those games, he had three knocks. And Adam LaRoche has hit safely in seven of his last nine. Nice to be able to talk about some offensive numbers lately. Isn't it? The Nats batting average is still the lowest in baseball at 225. Minnesota and Seattle the next two at 228. But the trend is upward and that's good news. Nix didn't get much on that one and he will drop it into center field. You have to play him so deep and now he's batting 312. There's no substitute for strength. And all this is is sheer brute strength. The ball hits him about his label. But he's so strong he dunks the ball deep enough over the infield that nobody has a chance. And that ball was up in the sky for a lot in the air for a long time. Just in that no man's land there. And Lance Nick extends his hitting streak to six games. Nice. We spoke about it last night. They have the third baseman Dobbs is playing shortstop in a game like this. It looks like it may end up being a, a one or two run game. You know, this is where I go ahead and drop a bunt right now. Get runners on first and second. LaRoche has tried it a couple of times this year. Bunted the ball too hard. But right now with nobody over there at third base. He can square around and bunt that ball over there and get runners at first and second. It's just something that. You see, and you're not planning to do it, but it just jumps out at you. And, Ray, if you do it a time or two, are other teams then forced to call off the shift? Well, yeah. It, it, if you make up your mind that you're going to just take that bunt, then other teams will do that. They can't afford to let runners be on first and second all day long with nobody out. Um, you just can't do it. Or at least the shorts, the third baseman will play and respect the bunt, maybe play in that same area, but come all the way up on the grass to try to discourage the bunt. But, you know, then that opens up all that area behind the infield that just as you saw Lance Nix, that ball fall in there. But that, wow. I mean, you've got... There's 50 feet of room at least. Got all that space. Two and one to LaRoche. When you think about it, it's 90, 60 feet to third base. He's playing now all the way back. That's another 40 feet. So he's 130 feet. And you're talking about this whole area right in here that you can get bunt the ball. And that's huge. That's huge. Two and one count. You know, you can get a strike. Square around and bunt it over there. There's just no reason not to. Well, that's a high strike call. Adam quickly glance back at Doug Eddings. That changes the at bat instead of three to one. It's two and two. And this is strike. A, it it, it doesn't track. look like a strike to a hitter because it's up and away. It looks like more like a strike than those balls down and away because it's closer to your eyes. Then he goes down and away and strikes out LaRoche. See, so you never know. I mean, you never know, but I just you just think that someone would demand that bunt in that situation. I know you're in the bottom of the lineup, but it doesn't matter. You still have three hitters and Ramos, Harrison, and Cora capable 
And Ramos, a fantastic throw in the first inning. It looked like there was no way he could make up the jump that Hanley Ramirez got on that off-speed pitch, but he did. And Ramos is now five out of 11 gunning down runners this year. Ball high in the air off Ramos' bat. You know, that's about as happy as I've been to see a foul ball lately because he's staying on the ball trying to hit something to right field. Well, he's, he's been going, struggling, Ray, for, yeah. for his last 32. When he's going well, he's hitting the ball to right center field. When he was hitting 350, 360. But right there, everything's good. He's staying behind the ball. The bat's just a little late, as you see it behind the plate, angled toward the on-deck circle. By the way, I just did a little bit of math, which play-by-play -play guys are usually reluctant to do. <laughs> Combined with Pudge Rodriguez, Ramos and his veteran partner have thrown out 9 of 22 base dealers. That's strong. And only there's one other team in the league that has less base running attempts, steal attempts. So in other words, only one other team, our team's more reluctant to run against than our ball club, huh? Yep, That's and I awesome. have that note right here. But you can believe me on that. Well, you have the youngster working from the veteran. And they're both doing the job defensively, although Pudge's playing time is down considerably. Ramos is three for six against Sanchez with an RBI. One ball and two strikes here. Good idea on that pitch down low. Next up, Jerry Hurston Jr., who's 11 for his last 29. And to answer that question, only the Diamondbacks hmm. with 20 attempts. And they play in one of the best hitting ballparks in the country, so. Yeah, people don't run there. They don't run there very much. Almost pulls it maybe two feet outside that bag. Well, he has such strong hands. In my opinion, hands are the most important part of hitting. Everything starts there every, because you hold a bat in the hands and you have to get your hands started. And without strong hands, it's just impossible to hit. But this guy has impeccable bat control. And he has to use those hands, keep those hands back. When he gets really aggressive and, and what I call roars toward the mound with the front side of his body. He disallows his hands to work and gets in trouble. Here. That's pretty good. I've always felt that you just go up there, you look for a pitch that you can handle, a pitch that you know you can drive, anything else when you have two strikes, you, you have to fight it off. If it's anywhere close, even two baseballs off the plate or, or a baseball inside. You still have to nick that ball, fight it off, make it a tough at bat like Jerry Harrison had last week, and then get a pitch, a mistake pitch, and drive it. And a good eye there makes it three and two. See how quiet he is, Bob? And by quiet, I mean his backside is not, he's not pushing off of his backside. His left side is not collapsing. He's not rushing or moving his body toward the hitter. You say it all the time. My favorite hitting instructor was Bill Robinson and what was that saying that he always said slow feet fast hands that's right you get those feet on the ground you don't have to rush and and just don't charge with your feet let those hands work 3-2 of the runner going it's a strike the ball's into center field but because Coglin charges Knicks cannot advance so Anibal Sanchez has now struck out five actually four of the five he's retired but Nix does steal second as the Nats continue to run the base as well. That's his second and the Nationals 35th of the year. San Diego leads the league with 40. Well, this is one of those tough pitches and that ball looks like it worked its way out of the strike zone down. Let's see here in front Whoa. knee. Way beneath that front wow. knee down around the calves. And any time the catcher turns his glove inside out, the ball has to be down and I don't know why that pitch was called a strike because from every angle that we've seen, the pitch was down. Something is not right, either with Anibal Sanchez or with the mound. 
or maybe it's the catcher buck but here's the other thing about that play the catchers popping up in front of the umpire to throw out a runner at second base obscuring his view so for a pitcher to get a call like that is even more puzzling I mean we've seen pitches right down the middle not called strikes I don't know if his hand hit the belt ball or the back of the belt on Ramos or not but I, I believe that would be the only thing that would cause him to injure his hand on a throw it didn't look like he hit his helmet scoring position Knicks and Hairston 0 for 9 against Anibal Sanchez career and he gets some bad luck on a ball speared by Hanley Ramirez Nats are gone in the second no score Hopefully Monday night will be nice and clear when the Pirates are here. The $1 tickets are sold out, but still dollar hot dogs, peanuts, popcorn, and parking. Check the website so you know where to park for that great price. And we can't emphasize enough to you the starting time for Tuesday. Very rare. It's a $2 ticket Tuesday, but the game's at 105. Select seating available. Some restrictions apply while supplies last. And then Ansel, head for New York. Two at the Mets. Three in Baltimore, three in Milwaukee. And uh, how about some of you Nats fans buying some tickets up there at Camden Yards and giving the Nats some support on the road? We know many of you do. Love to see you up there. Dobbs, Buck, and Sanchez, top of the third. Greg Dobbs is three for five against Levon with four RBIs. You know, 26 pitches, 16 strikes for Hernandez through the first two. He was ripping on three and zero. Oh. Got the green light, and Espinosa throws him out. Let's check out our game flow from our friends at Hankook Tires. Be one with your tires, and the road will be one with you. B1 with Hankook tires. Driving emotion, I like that. Levon facing the minimum seven hitters so far. And here's John Buck. Big strong catcher who homered in the first inning here last night when he was batting fifth behind Gabby Sanchez against the left hander Gorzolani. Against the right hander today, he's in the eight hole. Well, he hit 20 homers for Toronto last year. Five more now for the Marlins. No other catcher's done that. That one down toward the end of his bat, but look how far he carries it. And Bernadina makes the catch about 390 feet away. John Buck's got some kind of power. I didn't think he hit that ball well at all. 
Well, we're going to look right here on the replay and see where he hits this ball. A little bit down on the end of the bat, not not on the end of the bat, but maybe an inch out from the sweet spot, and that's what kept it in the ballpark. Look at the contact right here. You'll notice that the ball is uh, uh, actually two inches from the end of the bat, so that's not a bad place to hit the ball. But Roger Bernardino again gets back there easily. There's Gabby Sanchez. Pardon me. Anibal Sanchez. Thank goodness Gabby Sanchez doesn't get the bat twice. Anibal 0 for 12 this year. O 70 career hitter with four RBIs. They got this kid from the Red Sox with Hanley Ramirez plus two minor leaguers for Josh Beckett, Mike Lowell, and Guillermo Moda back in the November of 05, a big time transaction by the Marlins that really shaped their future. We were told at the time that for them to give away talents like Beckett, Lowell, and Moda, Hanley Ramirez was the player to make or break that trade, and the Red Sox threw him in there. Worth going to throw him out if he hits anything to right field because <laughs> he's playing deep second base. How about going up the middle? Look at that. Marlins pitchers have now been on base three times in this series, and that'll get it up to Chris Coglin, who you saw in the on deck circle a moment ago. That's Florida's first base hit. And big base hit there to turn the lineup around and and uh, get the pitcher out of the way. But you like to retire that pitcher. You don't you don't necessarily want that man to get on base but some people have always said hey when he gets on he's going to get tired because he has to run the bases and so my goodness we start to get ourselves out of shape lately <laughs> he can't run the bases yeah I think that's overrated I mean if it's 95 degrees on a Sunday afternoon in July or August Adam LaRoche picks it. He knows there's two outs. Right to the bag he goes. And he retires Chris Coglin. Leave on with three zeros on the board so far. Bernadina, visit FCA.org, the Association for IT Pros. Debbie's working in the mist today. You okay down there? So far, so good, Bob. It is misty, but we'll get through it. Now, with Brian Broderick being designated for assignment, the National called up Cole Kimball from AAA Syracuse. He said yesterday, after the game, he got called into the manager's office by Randy Noor, thought he was in trouble, but all was good. He got the news that he was joining the Nationals today. It's just fun to be with a bunch of good guys in this pen. They've all been um, working hard all year, keeping the games close and stuff, and I just want to go in there and help the team. Now, Cole is a converted starter and national senior advisor to general manager Mike Rizzo. Davey Johnson told me he's definitely got that closer mentality. He said he's got an intestinal fortitude that is really good. He's of a different breed and definitely likes to get that last out, guys. 27 starts. 
as recently as three years ago at single a Hagerstown. And Mike Rizzo reports that he's throwing his fastball his four seamer about 94 right now. He's got a two seamer a curveball ray and a and a fork ball actually a splitter which is I guess a, a hard fork ball. But Kimball is tough to hit and we can't wait to see him. And we wish Brian Broderick well. Nationals put him on waivers. He was the losing pitcher in his only major league decision last night. Nationals had picked him up as a rule five guy from the St. Louis organization. Alex Cora seven for his last 22. And a two one count as he tries to get aboard in front of Levon Hernandez. Kimball by the way is a big kid six three. Two twenty five. Out of Great Meadows New Jersey he was selected in the twelfth round of the 06 draft. So we are seeing the fruits of these drafts making it to the major leagues. Once the Lerner family came in bought the ball club from Major League Baseball and made the commitment to put money into the organization and get that pipeline flowing. 3 2 to Alex right side Gabby Sanchez to the other Sanchez. Solutions that help you achieve your financial goals from PNC for the achiever in you with our minor league report and there's Cole Kimball his 12 games. Hey Ray I bet you like that ERA five out of five 14 Ks. <laughs> he has averaged 11.2 strikeouts per nine innings this season 115 Ks and 92.1 innings that's actually last year. 20,010 through 20,011. So last year combined with this year. Mm -hmm. And if he wants to keep that number 65, I'm sure he can, but stick around for a while. You might get one in the 40s, and then you know you're a major league pitcher. There's Levon Hernandez, who has always wanted to wear number 61. He was born in 75. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> you can always tell when Levon's the starting pitcher. There is lots of lively music playing in the clubhouse on the morning of that start. One ball and two strikes. He'll get his cuts up there. Levon's a 221 career hitter with 10 home runs, 80 RBIs. Only 10 home runs allowed last year by Anibal Sanchez. Mm. Fewest in baseball tied with Ubaldo Jimenez with the Colorado Rockies, so he doesn't give up a lot of gopher balls. For this year, in his first 44 innings. That's a little high rate. Levon with a little chopper. Pitcher will barehand it, plenty of time. Two outs. Top of the order now, Roger Bernardino. In that game at Atlanta where the Phillies and the Braves are battling. A couple of early runs for the Braves against Joe Blanton. And it looks like both of them came on solo home runs. Martin Prado led off the bottom of the first with his sixth, and then Nate McLeod hit his third. Jair Jurgens pitching for the Braves today. 2 0 Atlanta. I tell you what, if the Braves hadn't come back and beaten the Nats in extra innings the other night, they'd be really reeling. Right now, they're two games over 500, five and a half back of the Phils after the Phillies beat them last night. One ball, one strike to Roger. Pulled the ball, bounced out to Infante first time. And Roger, of course, is a young man with lots of power. He had 11 home runs and drove in 47 in 134 games last year. His on base percentage was 307 in those 414 at bats when he hit 246. I don't know. He just looks a lot calmer at the plate, Ray, even than he did at spring training. We saw a lot of right handers dropping breaking balls in the dirt on him, and he's looking much more relaxed at the plate. Well, that comes with exposure. The more experience you have, the more comfortable you feel at the play. 
That's a fastball up and in and the way Doug Eddings popped up I thought he might. Have the bow and arrow with him but he said ball three. Well there's not anything that this kid can't do the one thing the on base percentage could get better he's shown that thus far this year. And then some high gas actually a change up at 85 by him. He thought it was a fastball and Sanchez up to his old tricks against the Nets. Here at the ballpark, like we do on a regular basis, it's our DynCorp International Troop Recognition. At DynCorp, we serve today for a better tomorrow. Nationals bench always responds. John McLaren, Pudge, one of their biggest supporters. Even when Pudge is out there with the gear on, he'll turn around and clap a few times before fielding some warm-up pitches. Top of the fourth, Omar Infante for the Marlins. I think things are clearing up a little. We can see the Capitol Dome again from our vantage point up here. A cool day with mist. Very pleasant though. Infante hit the slow roll that is short first time on which Cora made a good play with LaRoche. Levon's first three innings, 38 pitches, 22 strikes. There's that slow breaking ball and another slow roller. Cora has more time this time. That is Levon Hernandez reaching the 3,000 innings pitched mark. The 108th pitcher to do it since the turn of the 20th century. How about that? Congratulations to Levo. Only Tim Wakefield, as we mentioned earlier, of active pitchers spinning that. Or at least not spinning that knuckleball around more innings over his career. Hey. Avon's first year in the big leagues was 97. If I remember correctly, Wakefield was a rookie pitching in the playoffs for the Pirates mm, circa 91 or 92. Oh, my. My best recollect recollection of Levo was when he was playing against the Braves in the playoffs. What's his curveball? He just throws that <laughs> thing from the top of the strike zone, literally to the bottom of the strike zone. Tim Wakefield's first year in the big leagues was 92 when he made 13 starts for the playoff bound Pirates. He started this season with 3,071 innings. So Levon started this uh, season about 125 innings behind Wakefield. One and two now to Hanley Ramirez who walked them was caught stealing first time. That's going to ring him up on the corner. Levon Hernandez has struck out their two best hitters today. 
Gabby Sanchez in the second and Ramirez here in the fourth. Well, this is spotted right here, right where he wants to throw it. Sets up outside, just nicks the corner of the plate with that swing back fastball. And Hanley couldn't do anything but spin around and put that bat back in the rack. All right, let's see what happens with Gabby Sanchez this time. A little slider. Still can't get that call. Probably not a strike, but Levon, as we mentioned, needs that wide corner out there to really be effective. Keeping that ball down. Got a nice, nice rhythm going today. Just 47 pitches, 29 of those strikes. Mixing his fastball in there. And he goes down and in with that fastball. Yeah, that ball had serious sink on it. I mean, that was 84 with. Levon looked at the baseball, said, what's wrong with this? The umpire's making him throw a new one well, <laughs> on the convergence pitch track. Yeah, that's because he thinks there might have been a foreign substance on that thing. That ball's not supposed to move like that. Convergence Technology and Citrix, the winning team for our desktop virtualization. Call the experts, 301-860-1960, or visit convergencetech.us. Levo went up in the strike zone there. You remember the last time he struck Gabby out on a fastball up above the letters. He threw that one just below the letters. Looks like a big slow curveball here to me. Oh my! 62. Levon drove to the ballpark faster than that today. <laughs> real evidently what does he have in mind I don't I just it looks like he caught his right hand with the rod and reel <laughs> and he's got a piece of something on his head <laughs> oh what a day pups in the park Espinosa looking to drag a bunt. Couldn't quite get it by the pitcher. But that's over nearer the line. Maybe eight or ten feet over. That's a base hit. Danny trying a lot of things now. As his batting average is down toward the 200 mark. It's a misty day. It's a comfortable day though at the ballpark. 65 at game time here at Nationals Park. We're seeing a very good pitcher's duel. Uneven in one sense. When you talk velocity very even in another sense when you're talking success. Levon Hernandez and Anibal Sanchez each giving up just one hit so far. Sanchez is throwing first pitch strikes to around 80 percent of his hitters right now.
Struck out swinging Jason Worth, who now has struck out nine times in his last four games. And 13 out of the last 15 games, Bob, he's struck out. So he's just going through one of those periods where he's not making a lot of contact consistently. And when they get ahead of him, they seem to put him away. The Nationals are the most struck out team in Major League Baseball this year. They came into this game with 313, averaging 8.2 a game. Pirates at 314. Now Pittsburgh plays later. The Nats have struck out five times already today. Most strikeouts in Major League Baseball. So I think you could say we're waiting for the bats to come alive as FP and I and I'm sure you and Johnny and Phil have talked about and Ben Gessling. But if you're not making contact there's no guarantee that batting average is going to go up a whole lot. It's not like the Nationals are hitting line drives at everybody. And this is a guy who punched out 11 of them last weekend. I think I heard Phil Wood say in the radio last night. And now Worth is gone. The Nationals struck out 100 times on the road trip. And they just looked like some of the hitters looked like they're in between. They laid on the fastball, laid on the fastball, and then way out in front of a breaking ball. That ball's not even close to a strike. You shouldn't even have to offer that pitch. That ball's down around the ankles. A good five, six balls off the plate. So it's it's just like just going through one of those things. You're just not seeing the ball well. I mean, but this is not a team that's going to lead the league in home runs. No, it's There's not really a team no that should strike that out either. Home runs. That's my point, Ray. There's no reason for the strikeouts if you're not a big power free swinging ball club. There's a bouncing ball from Nix. Lance has the Nets only hit. And on to the fifth inning we go. Sanchez and Levon scoreless. Leave on three strikeouts, a one hitter. Sanchez, six strikeouts, a one hitter. We knew this guy would be good. Well, he's making pitches. There's a slider down. He comes back with a fastball out away from the hitter. Levo's doing the same thing, just a little softer speed with a fastball away that locks up Ramirez and then the slow hook that gets John Buck. Uh, and we're back to life. And ball one, top of the fifth. Logan Morrison leads off wide to left first time. <laughs> that looked like a cue shot right off the top of the barrel. All right. Hammered through five last Sunday. Brilliant through four today.
To me, this is the only thing bad about taking the ball on opening day. For the first two months of the season, you're always matched up against some of the best pitchers in the league. I know John Lennon's had his share, but so has Levon. Well, there's no question about that. And you go out there and you have to pitch gems night after night after night to even get a decision. Well, he's got that curveball working. That's been his best pitch today. From 61 miles an hour all the way up to 79. Locating it, showing his fastball in and out, and then getting hitters out with a breaking ball. Two and two to Morrison. Target in. Tried to swing back that fastball and just threw it too far off the plate. Good hitting ball club, these Marlins. Big strong Mike Stanton is next, and then Greg Dobbs. Slider. Close enough on which to be swinging. Marlins are still without one of their frontline guys, and that's third baseman Donnie Murphy, who's out because of right wrist inflammation. Last year, he got shut down because of a serious injury to his other wrist. Not sure about when he'll be back. He's only been on the DL since May 2nd. But Edwin Rodriguez sure have some good spare parts and guys like Bonifacio and Dobbs who he can plug in. 3-2. That's a comebacker. Who's going to grab it? Espinosa. No real chance to throw him out. Alex Cora had too far to go. That's a base hit all the way for Logan Morrison. Levon couldn't get it as it bounced high over his head. When you come to the ballpark or call the box office or stop by, expect flexibility with the Grand Slam Flex Plan. Pick four games, get a fifth one free at nationals.com slash Grand Slam. And some of those plans start as low as $60 for those five ball games. Here's Stanton. Marlins have their leadoff man on for the first time. And the outside corner is just not available today. Stanton was called up June 8th of last year, hit 22 homers, drove in 59. And if it wasn't for that kid in San Francisco, Buster Posey, this might have been the rookie of the year. In 100 games, he drove in 59 runs and 359 at bats. He also had 21 doubles and a triple. But like a lot of young sluggers, he found time after June 8th to strike out 123 times. <laughs> That's really something when you consider he was in the minor leagues for the first two months. I don't know, Ray. I think back about the strikeouts. We were on that subject last inning. Seems to me it was about the mid to late 80s when young guys like Pete and Cavillia and Rob Deere came up and all of a sudden nobody cared about striking out anymore. They just wanted to see the long ball. There's that big slow hook and about 87 was I think the year we first started hearing about the lively baseball and uh, it's been a different game since then. Verizon pitch track. Beautiful curveball. 69 again. Just living off that curveball today as it's been by far his best pitch. Certainly as far as throwing strikes with it. 2 2 pitch. And Stanton will pop it up. Danny Espinosa is under it for the first out here in the fourth. Let's check it out again on the Verizon pitch track. You can rule the air on the most advanced 4G network in the world Verizon 4G LTE. Well, he just throws the ball right down the middle. Slow curve ball right down the middle. Got him out front a little bit on his front foot. Ends up taking some of the bat speed out of the, his swing and popped it up. So that's all what Warren Spahn said. Pitching, hitting is all timing, and pitching is all about offsetting that timing. Hmm. You know, then you see guys these days like Pujols, Chipper Jones. Who in many cases have more walks than strikeouts. We consider them such rare birds these days. Well, I hate strikeouts, and, and I'm, I, I hate to even get started on it. We talked about it almost every night 
on our show and and because uh, I've just seen it time after time after time again where we have runners in scoring position that nobody makes contact and sometimes you're two and oh and they swing hard three times and you go put the bat in the bat rack. There has to be a change. There has to be some type of shortening up some type of give in uh, not emotionally. You've got to get stronger with two strikes but you have to battle and you just can't take for granted that you're going to strike out. It should be something that tears your guts out when you don't make contact. I mean there is something about making contact. The way that I was raised with my father, if I struck out, I didn't hear the end of it. So, <laughs> you know, I had two pitches to try to hit the ball hard, try to hit doubles or, or drive the ball. Once I got behind with two strikes, I'm trying to make contact any way I can to put the ball in play, especially situational hitting. One ball, one strike to Dobbs. Who knows all about situational hitting? Long time with the Phillies and now the Marlins a late inning pinch hitting guy but getting lots of playing time now. And, and Bob you might have one guy on a team in the 70s 80s uh, 60s that would you know go for the downs like a Willie Stargell Willie McCovey uh, Lee May but even guys like Tony Perez were tough two strike hitters bench was a tough two strike hitter Gary Carter tough two strike hitters. Uh, Andre Dawson those guys could they could pull but you get them with two strikes they're not going to just swing and miss they're going to fight pitches off and get a better pitch to hit until that pitcher makes a mistake and uh, sometimes there seems to be a concession that okay I'm going to swing as hard as I can if I hit this ball I hit it if I don't I'm going back and that's just not the right mindset I, mean, I understand when you're down I mean when it's a Zero zero ball game, and you're at home, and it's in the seventh, eighth, ninth inning. You know, swinging for the downs, yeah. but I don't understand with a runner on second base and nobody out, how you know you can't somehow make some type of contact. Folks, uh, this is a man who knows what he's talking about. Ray Knight made contact in his career 89 percent of the time. That's out of play to the left side. So you're you're preaching what you practiced, Ray. That's pretty impressive. Only striking out 11 percent of the time in a long career. Levon Hernandez waging quite a battle with Greg Dobbs here in the fifth inning. One on one out. Morrison bounced a base hit over the mound first time. Levon popped up Stanton. And Dobbs continues to battle here on two and two. Well, that's pretty much in a bet you were just talking about. Wow. And you see what he did with it? He decides that he just changes his field. First couple of swings, he had the bat barrel out front. After that, he has two strikes. He just decides, hey, I'm going to put the bat on the ball the best way I can, the best way to put the bat on the ball is wait see the ball as long as you can trust your hands he had no nothing in the back of his mind about pulling that ball everything was take the ball the other way see it as long as I can and try to put it in play and he did and now the Marlins have their first base runner on second base John Buck pulls one to his left or to his right rather Cora wow an amazing 6-4 force play as Alex Cora first of all kept the ball out of left field and then he gets an out on top of it. And if John Buck a catcher isn't hustling they might have doubled him up. Superb play here just quickness diving making the play stopping the ball keeping the run from going there and somehow getting the ball to second base and Danny having a chance to turn it really no chance but Sweet play, and this is what you talk about, young infielders. Knock the ball down. Keep the ball in the infield. With a runner on second base, do whatever you can to keep that ball in the infield. Not only did he do that, as you said, Bob, he got the out. Bouncing ball to Cora, and this will end the inning on a throw to LaRoche. That's nice. Alex Cora subbing for Ian Desmond today. Put him anywhere. He'll do the job with the leather.
ballpark. Hey, by the way, today's one of those family fun pack days, so is tomorrow. Don't forget about that. And our next TV game will be tomorrow. Javier Vasquez, two and three. Three earned runs or more in all seven of his starts this year. He'll make his A start. He's been really hittable at 312. And then Jason Marquis for the Nets. Trying to win his fifth game of the year, and this will be life after 100 wins for Jason Marquis. 135 first pitch, and that's extra at one. We'll join you from the ballpark at 130 and then play the finale of this three game series before the Pirates come in for two Monday, Tuesday. Levon Hernandez is doing his part. Hopefully, hopefully, the boys will take care of uh, the other part now. Now, you know. Having discussed all of these things on this strikeout discussion, as Bear Bryant used to say, you know, the other guys are on scholarship too. Oh, yeah. And so you're facing a tough pitcher today. Striking out six times in four innings against Anibal Sanchez is not the most humiliating thing out there. Well, let me get this straight. I mean, strikeouts are part of the game. There are just times that you can't do it over and over and over again with a runner on third base and infield back. Think how many times this ball club has struck out with a runner on third base, the infield back, and all you have to do is keep the ball to the center of the field. Uh, whether it's the second baseman, shortstop, a ground ball to the center of the field, or a fly ball anywhere in the outfield. And a lot of times you just go up there, get a pitch in an area. You're not trying to hit the ball out of the ballpark. You're just trying to make solid contact. So, you know, I'm not trying to rag on anybody. It's a fact. It's, it's right there in the stats. And we strike out too much. There's no question about it for the type of hitters that we are. Uh, um, it's no longer early. It's a trend that we have set, and it's uh, up to them to fight and work to have a little different mindset in putting the ball in play. And LaRoche gets jammed on that one. Hanley Ramirez is out. Ramos coming up. Let's check in on some do you knows from AT&T. Two Marlins starters that have never lost to the Nats. Have you been paying attention, folks? We'll let you think about it and tell you who they are shortly. Wilson Ramos had a pretty good battle with Anibal Sanchez first time. He was called out with Nick stealing second on what we thought was a pitch low for ball four. And then Hairston lined out to end that threat in the second. Ramos pulling that ball over by the bag. Kind of reaching and lunging for the ball right now, and he's four for his last 34. And, and, and another idea, too, uh, another thought. Breaking ball first pitch. Ramos, a good fastball hitter. Are you going up there now? Are you looking for a ball in a particular area and thinking fastball, or are you just looking for the ball? You can't be just looking for the ball. You have to have some type of refined idea of what you want to do. Now, if he's starting you off with breaking balls every at bat and the breaking balls are not good breaking balls, they're just get me over type breaking balls, that's one thing. You can go up there and look for a breaking ball and guess it. I see so often the guys seemingly, the reason that they are in between is they're looking for a breaking ball and swing at the fastball and hit it late. Or they're dead set on a fastball and they rush and they hit a breaking ball out front. So it is all about approach and more. It's as much mental as it is physical or mechanical. I just I don't believe you go up to the plate either and swing at a curveball down around your ankles. Oh and oh. Hairston lined out to the shortstop Ramirez first time. Jerry's been getting some good swings. That's a really good take on a good breaking ball there near the corner. Hairston is 11 for his last 30 over nine games. So his betting average up in the 240 range now after a slow start. Two and two. And Bob, don't think that I didn't do it. <laughs> I, did, I did it way too many times, but you learn over time, and what you do is you correct, you make those correct corrections and adjustments as soon as you can, and you learn to get the ball up, get a better pitch. And hitting is all about getting a good pitch to hit. And of course, he had the swing of that one on a two strike count. Oh, yeah. This is a little different situation. You know, I think you're very selective when you're ahead in the count. 
look in one area, and then when you are behind in the count, you must be aggressive. You must be able to fight off any pitch that's borderline. 2-2 Two -two to Hairston. That's a fastball by him on the outside corner. Seven Ks for Sanchez through five. Quite a scoreless battle at the ballpark today. Sunday tomorrow with the Harris Teeter Family Fun Pack. It's in effect today and tomorrow. All inclusive.